You're going. All right. So the goal for today is to do a review of transparency because remember, um, you guys did your practice paintings last week. And when I looked at your practice paintings, I could tell that that was kind of the biggest thing that we were still um, needing some more help with, okay? So we have one object here that I'm gonna focus on for today. Um, that is the wine glass, which has like several different areas of transparency, right? There's the, the glass part on top, there's the little ball in the middle, and then there's the stem, in addition to obviously the, the flat, kind of platypus-like foot base. Um, that's just a fun word to say. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to first decide that I want the glass to be this tall, okay? Now I'm not really thinking compositionally right now when you guys do your, your full length still life painting when we do the big arrangement, you're gonna have to think a lot more compositionally, meaning where are you putting things on the canvas and how are you filling that space? so that it's interesting and engaging and moves your viewer's eye around and all that kind of good stuff. Um, for right now, I'm just doing it big enough so that you can see it and I still have uh, uh, enough board to hold on to. Fair enough? Okay. Notice I did not measure anything yet. So quick proportional review, right? I'm going to do my thumb measurement technique. I am comparing the height of the glass to the width of the glass. And when I do that, the width is I'm looking at the width at the top because that's the widest part of the glass and the width is just barely less than half of the height. Does that make sense? Notice I am not gonna go like this and then exactly like this. I'm not comparing this to this, okay? That's super, super important that you get that. Remember I already made the height, how tall I wanted the glass to be on the canvas, right? So now I need to compare this height, and I always do this when I already have paint on the bristles, and that's how I ended up with paint in my hair last hour. So here's the height, okay? Now, part of that, right? This is gonna be awkward. Can you still see this on the camera, okay? No, you can't. Yeah. Uh -huh. Do you want a smaller camera? Nope, it's fine. Here's half, okay, because the hole would be from here to here. So half would be about here. So I need to go a little bit less than that for the uh, top of the glass. Okay, does that make sense? Here and about there. Any questions so far? Stop me if I go too fast. Okay, so there's the width. Here's my height. Now I'm gonna look at, okay, compared to the height, how tall is like that little, um, the base of where the cup would be. Okay, for me, that's about this tall. If I compare that to the bottom, it's about the same length as the stem, not including the base. Okay, so I've got the base would come up about here, and then halfway between here and here would be the top of the ball. Everybody with me so far? Okay, so there's the ball. Here's the bottom of the cup part, okay? I'm gonna compare the width of the glass to the height of the glass part. It's about even, so I'm gonna use that as my check. So here's the width of the glass, here's the height of the glass, so I made that ball just a little bit high. So here's really where the ball should be. And that means I assumed this was too high. Okay, so using my hands on a clock, that's about, it's about a 10 o'clock angle, which looks about right. So there, that looks about right. If I compare the width of this to the width of the top now, I don't wanna make any assumptions. It's almost the same, it's just barely less than that. So I'm looking at where that lines up. That should be about the same. Any questions on how I got this so far? The stem still looks too long to me. This ball might have to be shorter. Okay, once I have that, I can put in other 
areas. So I've got like that plate in there. Here's the height of the glass. I can compare the width of the plate to the height of the glass and guess what? They are the same. That's pretty convenient. So here's the height of my glass. So the width of the plate then, I know you can't see this. The width of the plate is going to be about there. And the reason that I knew kind of where that was is I compared it to um, where the glass was. So I can see that the glass from my point of view is not centered in the plate. Um, looking at this, okay, I can tell that the distance between here and here, okay, even just visually I can tell that it's a little bit, it's almost the same as the width of this, but a little bit less, okay. And then the width from here to here is a little bit wider on this side. Okay, so I'm just gonna go with that for sake of time. If I was gonna really use this as like a full-blown finished painting, I would definitely check and recheck that. Okay, now I'm looking for intersection points. The back of the plate from where I'm sitting intersects with the stem about a third of the way between here and here. Okay, if you can't tell that just by visually looking at it, you can certainly use the thumb measurement and check how many of those um, that happen, or how many of those distances happen within that length of the stem. From here to the bottom of the shadow is about the same, and then the plate intersects about here. So here's the front edge of the plate, here's the back edge of the plate. Okay, and we know that that's not as straight a line as I just made it out to be. What measurement or uh, technique would you use to check the angles of this edge of the plate? Hands on the clock. Hands on the clock, very good. Okay, this is gonna be my shadow under the plate. If I was not just concentrating on transparency today, I would be checking and rechecking all of this as well. And then I've got behind the plate, from that widest point there, I've got the paper coming out here. And then my glass ends down here. opening is about here. You all with me so far? Mm -hmm. Okay, so far that's just proportions. And yes, there's also the candle. I'm looking at intersection points. Candle goes about here, ends about here. It doesn't go as far for me as wide as the plate is. Okay, what would be an easy way to check that? Check the height versus the width. Compared to the glass, there's a lot of similarities here. It's almost the same height as the glass. It's pretty much almost the same. So here's the height of the glass. Here's the height of the candle. Look at where that's going to put the height of my candle. It's going to put it right at the top of the canvas, which compositionally is kind of icky. It's an art term. Okay. Um, this actually happened in second hour two. If you look at that one, see how the edge of the blue plate falls right up against the edge of the canvas there? Um, and then that one, the bowl, the, um, the glass, the ball shape, is also smack dab in the center of the canvas, which is also quite icky. Don't do that. In your practice paintings, it didn't really matter. Um, however, in your final uh, still life, it is going to matter. Okay. Does anybody know what this line is right here that I just put into the class? It's the edge of the candle, yes. So why is it way over here? It's distorted. It's distorted because we're looking at it through the glass. So when you're working with transparency, um, just like when you're working with reflection, you want to focus on what you're actually seeing. Okay? We can't just make an assumption. What a lot of people were doing in their practice paintings was 
they would paint, you know, say like they know the wall is behind it, so they'd paint the color of the wall in here, and then they would just take like some white and just dry brush over the top. Well, you're kind of getting it, right? But that's not actually kind of the whole story. Okay, so that's what we really want to focus on is being able to show those colors accurately um, and paint them in a way that we have control over what we're doing. Okay, so what I'm mixing up right now, and I probably should use the brush, is um, going to be some wall color. Okay, I'm going to start with the wall color because that's one of the more dominant colors that we're going to work with here. This is where I'm probably going to start needing some more paint if I run out, but we'll see. So I'm just mixing up uh, both yellows together. I'm, I know I need to create kind of like a warm beige kind of off-white color. I'm going to lighten it up with some white. And because life does not happen straight out of the Crayola box, I am going to dull it down quite a bit. Okay? Because this is kind of a warm golden color, what am I going to dull it down with? Purple. Purple would be okay. Blue would also be okay. Which one's my warm blue? Anybody remember? I feel like this one. Yeah. It's not though. Yes, me. It's definitely this one. See the difference? Look what I just did. Here's cool blue. Here's warm blue. And I don't know if the camera's going to pick that up, but can you guys see that? This one looks brighter. It looks like a more vivid green. Yeah. This one looks duller already. Okay, so when you're looking to make a duller color, you want to use the opposite of whatever color that inherently is. So here's what I mean. Blue inherently by itself is a warmer, cool color. Cool. It's a cool color. So if I use a warm blue, it sounds like an oxymoron, right? If blue is automatically a cool color, how can I have a warm version of that cool color? What's going to happen? It's going to look duller. Does that make sense? So when I want to make a nice neutral color, I use those oxymoron colors because it's going to help neutralize what we're doing. Look, I painted the same color as what the tray was. Okay, now is this the exact color what I need? Not really. But is it close enough? Yes, it is. And something I talked a lot about second hour as well is I don't always think of colors in absolute exact terms, okay? So I'm not like really super picky about like what we call this color. I'm not like, well, this is, you know, avocado with a hint of chartreuse. Like, I don't, I don't care all that much about what the name of the color is because guess what? It doesn't matter if I hit the name of that color exactly right. It doesn't matter if I match exactly that particular shade of color. What does matter and what kind of language you'll hear me use to describe it is the color of the wall gets lighter, right, and a little bit more golden over on this side. So I'm using more white in there and I'm using a little bit more yellow without dulling as much as I move over this way. Okay, yes, I'm skipping the lamp. Yes, I know that's not really cool, but whatever. Mm -hmm. I'm the art teacher and I can do what I want. Second hour was making fun of me for that because when I got paint in my hair this morning, I said, well, it's fine, whatever, I'm an art teacher. And they laughed at me. You have an excuse. Right? I, I feel like I could, I could pull off hair, or hair, in my <laughs> art hair. I can't pull off saying it apparently, but but you can pull it. But off. I can wear it. That's the key, you right? Wear it. You got to be able to wear it, not be able to pronounce it. Okay. Now that we've got that Maybe that's straight. Maybe that's the next color you're gonna dye your hair. Yes. Art. <laughs> it is art color. Because <laughs> we're not talking in color absolutes. You do not name a color. It's just about. So do you guys see where I'm getting that gradient from? Yeah. Okay. That's really important, and I know that that's not really the focus of today either, but. Um, it's going to help you just with how you're thinking of your colors, okay? To start thinking of how does this color change as it goes over time? Because you can't really make the assumption that, I mean, we know clearly that the wall in real life is all the same paint color, right? But as you see it, it interacts with different things, and that becomes different as we perceive that, okay? So if you understand that, you're halfway there. Did 
bigger brush. I know, I should have. Gigantic. Guess what I also forgot? <laughs> We're missing a line in here. What did I miss? The table! Yes, how does the table compare to the wall? Slightly lighter. Yep. Definitely makes a horizontal line there. that down just a little bit. Now because this is still wet you're not going to see a whole lot of that and we should see more and also because the lamp is there the contrast is not going to be quite right. And what the heck happened here? Chris Harkle you, you kind of made a pun. Oh I did again? Well because see more and we went down. Uh -huh. That was a good one. So I'm looking to see these intersection points. Um, where does the table intersect with the candle and then also where does it intersect with the stem of the glass and that's why I screwed it up the first time. I did not pick the right point. Okay so you can see that that should have more contrast in real life yes? Mm -hmm. Okay. Realistically, this would help if I did this. If I warm this up. Better? Mm -hmm. And of course, we would have the same. No, we wouldn't have the same. Do you see how I just made that assumption? I would be wrong. Miss Harple. I know. It's okay. Miss Harple's wrong sometimes. You can be wrong in art. You just gotta know how to fix it. So because I don't want to paint that like cart of paper back there and all the ladders and whatnot, if I squint, I'm gonna approximate what I would see. And that is some darkness. Okay. Okay, we don't care about that part. So, I've got the candle, I've got this. Now I have to get into the important part here, and that is the transparency. Okay? So, what am I actually seeing through that glass? I'm seeing candle, and I'm seeing the wall. Okay, now this is gonna go against a little bit what we learned at the beginning of the year. Remember at the beginning of the year when we were talking about grid uh, portraits? Remember I kept saying draw lines and shapes, not noses and facial features and things like that. Do you remember that? Yeah. Okay, well I hope you got good at that because now we're gonna throw that all away. So the idea is that you still need to look at the lines and shapes, and I've probably said it, in fact, very recently when I said, okay, when you're doing transparency, you got to draw and paint what you see, and you do have to focus on what colors you actually see, that's important, and what shapes, okay, and also while we're at it, what transitions they make as they go from lines and shapes, but it's going to help you break those down if you know what it is that you're seeing. So for example, I know that this color is a variation of the wall color, right? So when we go from wall to glass, what's the difference? How does that color change from here to here? It gets lighter up here. It's a little bit duller in there because the glass makes it a little bit duller. Do you guys see that? Yeah. Yes, no? Felt like I was just abandoned by all of you. We can't abandon you. Thanks. <laughs> okay, and then down here, it gets actually quite a bit darker. 
Now I'm focusing on what shape that actually makes. Okay, I can't just assume. It's not really an outline. That line of darkness doesn't go really all the way across. Wow, this is so not lined up properly. See what happens when you rush? If I didn't, though, my demos would take, like, a long time. You wouldn't really enjoy Instead that. of an hour demo, you would have, like, four-hour demo? Right. Just do it. Even an hour demo is really... Do a time-lapse and then... Over. Should, but then but it would take a long time to edit yeah. that together and put it on top. You betcha. Someday when I have a full time editor, I will get right on that. They'll hire you an editor. That would be great. <laughs> okay, so I've got the dark in there. Okay, I've also got to get some red in there. Now I have avoided that red of the candle so far. <laughs> that wasn't really, I wasn't like, trying to, but nonetheless. It has happened. So we need to do something about that. On the candle, it's lighter up here. Yes? yes. It gets darker as it goes down. So you gotta really kind of work some complexity into your gradients here. Not only does it get darker as it goes down, but it also gets darker as it goes right. And to some extent to this side also. And I used some warm blue. I really, really like using warm blue for shadows because again, that oxymoronic color. I don't know if that's really a word, but I'm an art teacher. I can do what I want. <laughs> I can do what I what want. Cool I can say what I want. Cool yellow. Um, yellow's kind of a funny one because it's kind of right in the center between warms and cools. Um, yes is the short answer. Purple is even if it isn't a word, you can make it a word. I can make it a word. You guys know She's what I mean. Teacher. Remember, yeah, I said we're not speaking in we're not speaking in absolutes. We're speaking in relative terms. Or in other words, Harpold language. No, I, you, everybody Ar can do that. It's not specific to Harpold. Ardenese. Ardenese. I don't Ar know. Ar what would you call art language? I don't know. Ardenese. Ardenese. Artwork is the art is the language, isn't it? Yeah, no, but but what is the what is it called? Is it just art, or is it like gardenese? You guys are asking like a whole lot of deep questions. <laughs> <laughs> These are like shower questions. <laughs> shower questions. Or like right before you fall asleep questions. Yes. Yeah. Just like what do you call? So here's my highlight in the candle. Um, it is white. Normally, remember we said we work towards yellow, but it is white in this case. Why is that? Has to do with the light. It also has to do with color. Uh, the surface, right? The reflectivity of the surface of that candle. So because the candle surface is actually a little bit shiny, it's going to reflect more white than necessarily yellow. The lamp that we just took out um, did have more yellow to it. Okay, so if you look in the highlights on that one, they're a lot more yellow than on here, okay? Now, when I look at the part of the candle, no, yeah, that's right, the part of the candle that I see through the glass, how does that color change? Um, I can't tell, so. Yeah, I can't tell because all of the candle is in the glass. It's a little darker, it's also a little bit dull, duller, yes. Very good. That's a really good question. She said, does it always duller when you see it through a glass? Depends on the glass. If it's really, really clean glass, um, and if it's thin enough, it won't affect the color all that much. Um, that bottle right behind Brody, can you grab that bottle that has the cork in it, please? Not the green one, but the clear one by the apple. Okay, this bottle is really thin and is really clear, thank you. So this is not gonna have a whole lot of effect, okay? Um, however, that glass happens to be a little bit dusty. Um, if we used, like, can you go grab me that glass face over there, please? That one over there is pretty dusty. Um, the dustier the glass, the more, thank you, the more effect it's gonna have on your colors. Um, this one's also much thicker. Okay, so this, like you can tell right now, can you see like how it's a little green? 
in the yeah. thickness of the glass. Yeah. This glass is going to also kind of have its own color that it's going to throw into the mix. Whereas something like this, when you look at the edge, it's a little bit green, but not nearly as much. Yeah. Does that make sense? Good question. Glad you asked. So I also have to focus on where that red is actually occurring. And um, where the highlights are going to fall on top of it. Okay, so I'm putting this in there, but I know that, and there's a little like red spot over here, and then there's more red here, and there's more red here. Okay, so that's important that you get all those in, and then there's some down here, which I'm not there yet, obviously. Um, but it's important that like while you have it on your brush, you get it in at least a little bit in those important places because it's going to help it balance together. In fact, there's probably a little bit up here too. Okay. You can very clearly see the top of the glass, but then like the bottom of the glass is like blending in. Mm -hmm. And those are the kinds of things that you need to figure out. You need to assess and you need to paint as you see them. Like what? Oh, yeah, I can see that. So in the stem, the cool thing about this stem is there's like a lot of colors going on. Same thing with the ball here as well. And I don't know why I have so much separation in between there. Apparently my proportions have failed me. Proportions don't fail me now. And like notice my brush that I'm using is not small. It could be. I mean, I have a smaller one, but if you just get the important stuff in the right spot, you can get away with a lot. Making sense? Yeah. So see how I took that shadow color from up here and now I'm using it to define some of the shadows in the plate. Why am I using the same shadow color in multiple places? Balance. Creates balance, unity, helps it feel repetitive so like it belongs. And realistically, let's think about like the environment here. Whatever color is happening in the shadow is going to happen on multiple objects because that is how light works. For a minute I thought you were going to say that's how life works. Well, that's how life works too. It fits. Either way. Okay, I'm using yellow and cool, no, excuse me, yellow and warm blue again to make this very dull green color. In fact, that's kind of on the bright side. And I'm trying to look at, because the plate is reflective, right? It's a shiny plate. So even though I know that the plate is green, I have to focus on what I'm actually seeing. And that is that there are some lighter areas and some duller areas. And there's even some kind of reddish areas. And like what I'm painting here is not all that well defined, but you can get away with a lot, like I said, because the lights and the shadows are going to be in the right spot. and I hit other parts of the canvas. canvas. Thank you. For my next trick. I'm 
not going to get all of the candles. <laughs> For my next. <laughs> <laughs> Put more peels in my hair. Just like start. <laughs> just, just, just start your art hair. Here's the other really cool thing, and a lot of people when they first come to art class, they freak out over having to use these like warm and cool primaries, and they're like, why can't you just give us green? Okay, well guess what? Because I used the same six primaries for this whole painting, it's automatically creating that sense of balance because I'm limited in my palette, right? So because I have to use those colors, they're going to have a much better um, chance of creating unity because those colors have already been used and repeated. Does that make sense? I don't think that works with crayons. You have like two minutes. Thank you. Okay, I clearly do not have time to finish the whole thing. So what part would you like me to finish besides this shadow right here, which is bugging me? I guess like the highlights of the glass. Highlights of the glass? Okay, yeah. you got it. Those are shadows, I know. But I have this on my brush, so I'm going for it. Okay, so for the highlights, because it's shiny, I'm going to go back with, thank you for cleaning that out. I'm going to start with white, and I'm going to see how it looks. So I've got a highlight here. And here. And here. This is a big one, so that's not strong enough. And I'm trying to focus on what shape it is, but not so much that it's all that exact. <laughs> this one down here is a little bit warmer. So I'm going to have to put some yellow in there. And then there are some lighter highlights back here that are a little bit warmer as well. Now you guys have been sitting really close to me, so we haven't done a lot of looking from a distance, but if you go look in the camera screen right now, I think you're gonna be pleasantly surprised. It actually, it looks like the top of the glass looks really good. Yep. And the reason is because it's simulating, is like it. looking at it on that tiny little screen, is simulating looking from a distance. That's why it's so important to look from a distance. Yeah, your glass looks really good. Okay? Thank you, guys. Stop it. Yeah.